Hey folks, Sean McCormick here. We're going to have a look at import because there's been a change to import in Lightroom 6.2. But to see the changes, really, we're going to have to look at import in 6.1. So I'm going to show you a little bit of what's happening in 6.1 and then I'll install 6.2 and we can have a look at 6.2 from there. Some of the features I just want to point out uh, so that you can see what's going on and so that the changes will be really obvious and the changes are very obvious and to do this I've had to it, it, like import 6.2 and then remove it completely and then reinstall 6.1.1 um, you can do this through a full install because Lightroom now is a full installer on both Mac and PC so basically the way import used to work was that you'd have your source section here the images that you're going to use here and then on the right hand side you would have your options your destination and things like that so the idea is that it move, you move across the screen from one section so you set up here you choose from here and you put stuff here along the top you decide how you're going to do the move from here to here so there were a lot of little features um, in it that were kind of confusing to people like when you see this uh, first it is a lot to take in you look at it and like oh my god there's so much stuff going on all i want to do is get my photos off my card so the changes are made to help people getting used to lightroom but unfortunately it's left uh, some of the pro users a little bit in the cold and i'll explain why as we go along the first uh, thing we notice that we have here is that we have our source which is our device and we have this eject after import so it'll automatically eject the card so we can just pull it out to put it straight back in the camera um, we have a couple of options here, copy is DNG, copy, move and add. Now because this is from a memory card we don't have move or add here um, to help protect you. Uh, along in the centre here we have all photos um, and I'm just going to open file handling for a second. So we have new photos and new photos is based on don't import suspected duplicates. So that way it's preventing you from accidentally so, uh, importing suspected duplicates and we also have destination folders so I close this down we can see that I have two dates this is based on down here on the destination I am importing by date so it tells me there's two dates to import so I could actually turn off one date and only imp only import a single date if I wanted so if you're doing lots of shoots on a card you can import only one shoot based on the date if you want to do that from a card sometimes if you have a big card and you're shooting lots of days uh, I like to do that even though I've imported stuff I might leave stuff on the car just as a, a backup especially if I'm traveling and um, so that's a great option for that uh, so those are just the, some of the basic things that I just want to cover and um, you do have your import presets very very visible down here on the bottom where you can choose stuff from now I have two of them here and it's depending on what I'm actually doing at the time the 64 gig external just sets it up so that it puts it onto a little USB stick for transport and carbon is my nightclub one and um, so that way I'm not renaming every time I can just jump in it goes to all goes to the same place and names it correctly and all that stuff so those are import presets so that's basically a very very quick look over at some of the features that are in 6.1.1 uh, for Lightroom import so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to import 6.2 and show you how 6.2 looks. It's very, very different. So here I am and I am now in item 6.2. So I'm going to shove a memory card in. So that's the same memory card we had a few minutes ago. Uh, which is an iFi card, as we can see here from this coming up. And in theory it should start import but it's not starting import there from it's going to click import so we have this new uh, add photos so this is very very different than what we've seen before and what we have here is we have sources so if the camera was connected we see this we see there's a memory card and we see there's external drives now when there are a lot of external drives or drives added Lightroom will scan and look for those drives so that uh, it can add it as a source to import from I'm just going to plug in a little 64 gigabyte USB stick. And I do mean little. It sticks out about half an inch from the edge when it goes in. So that's now shown up here as drive. So there's going to be loads of bits on that. So it gives you an idea of it's selecting one particular folder from there. So um, and a few others here, and you can basically go through them and select them. 
So I'm going to go for the card. You can also browse the computer and stuff like that. So this is neat. I really, really like it. What I don't like is I don't like the fact that it's somebody else's photo in the background. But your mileage may vary on that. This option can also be turned off that you don't have to see this and it goes straight to the import dialog. Um, and there are issues with the scanning. The scanning can cause problems and, and give stability issues and slow down the machine. There is an option to turn it off. I will show you that. Okay. So this now is what import looks like. So now what we're doing is we're seeing everything that's on the card. And this stuff is grayed out now because these are this stuff is already on the card. Okay, these are already imported. So let's say I want to import them again anyway. Well, in actual fact, I don't have a choice. Now, hang on a second. I'm going to turn that cog off because when you actually use it for the first time, you don't get to see that cog. Um, it just shows you the images. And you have these ticks on them to say these are the images that are going to get imported. You can't really see them properly. If you double click on it, it turns it on, or click on it, it turns it on and off. To actually go in to see it, it takes lots and lots of clicking. Or we still have our loop view here. Okay. What we can't do that you could definitely do in 6.11 is I can't zoom in any further to see any more detail in the shot to decide is there enough critical sharpness um, to, to for the image so that I can actually will I bring the image in or not this is important if you're doing press stuff where you only need two or three shots um, and you, you need to get them out as quickly as possible so you would generally just run through them find the ones you need to get out import them caption them and get them out so again we can turn this on and off from here and our pick and unflag uh, shortcuts P and U still work. So let's go into the actual uh, cog here, which is set up and lets us change things. Okay. So in file handling, we have copy. Um, you can only have copy from the card anywhere here. And your destination is automatically set to pictures. Now, if you are, you can choose here to put it to an external drive, but if that external drive gets disconnected, it will always go back to pictures or my pictures uh, by default, which is okay, except if you have your whole library on external drives or you're on, like this is a MacBook Air, which is 128 gigabytes, and there's about 10 gigabytes left on it. Um, so there's, I don't have space to import a card onto it. Uh, my cards are 16 gigabyte cards generally, and I just, just don't have room to put stuff on this drive. Everything goes on to an external uh, when I'm using this machine. So you can select that uh, and change it. I'm not going to change it uh, for this demo. You can also put it into a subfolder as before by date. It's the same, exactly the same date organization. And you can add to collections. So this stuff is exactly the same here. A new thing is with keywords and metadata. Uh, you can choose to have a preset and stuff like that. But if you click advanced, you get more control here. So you now have an import preset that you can use. You can add your develop preset, uh, builders, different kind of previews. Your copy as DNG is now down here as an option to convert to DNG. I like that change. I think it's a good change. You can make a second copy, so still have your backup. And you still have your standard renaming with your file naming templates. Now, options that are missing from here, it's probably going to be pretty obvious what they are, in that it's there's no eject, so you can't eject the card automatically. There's no way to view the destination folders. I've had an issue where I've done an import and realized it was going to pictures. Or not, not that I realized that it got through halfway through the import and said, there's no more space left. And I'm going, there's at least a terabyte left on that drive. And then gone to find out, of course, no, there isn't because I've imported onto pictures. So then I canceled it and I came back. It wasn't able to tell that I'd already imported half the images from the card onto a different drive. Um, so that was an issue. Um, if you had, There's no destination folders, so you can't do the date thing that you saw in 6.11. Um, so that, those, to me, those are all problems. Um, so I'm going to cancel, all right, and I'm going to go back into import again. I'll show you why I'm doing this in a second. So let's say we do want to browse computer. Let's just choose beard. 
so you're going to be beard and I just so these are all coming in so what I can do is if I go to file handling I only have the options of copy or add I don't have move so I couldn't move files for example so that is a bit of an issue uh, move is only used about 2% of the time but when it is being used it's useful because you want to move stuff lock stock a barrel across from one drive to another when you consolidate in your library it's very very useful for stuff where you've had a series of small catalogs and rather than importing from catalog you want to move everything and you've created xmp files you can use move to move them across from one drive into another to consolidate them i've used it for that some people use move for everything and um, because what they do is they use a front end to Lightroom, something like Photo Mechanic or Perfect Browser, something like that. So they've already made their selections and done work like that. And uh, they may want to then consolidate onto another drive as they're bringing it into Lightroom. So I'm sorry to see that Move has gone. If you want Move, you need to talk to Adobe, put it in the uh, Photoshop feedback forum. Uh, so that's basically what it looks like now <clears throat> there is a little bit of a stability issue and um, it's more prevalent on Mac and it's not related to El Capitan it's actually just a general Mac thing that and I've seen it with crashing and um, where it's crashed and if I'm using the palette it just does not want to work with palette on this version at the moment I assume there's going to be an update to palette to help with that and um, so it's vital for some of the work I do to have palette available to me because it really does speed up my workflow and um, I do nightclub work two nights a week and so it gets me to bed earlier so it's, it's really essential that it works for me so I'm actually gonna this the import works after that as normal I actually think the layout is beautiful I think it's really really nice uh, there's one thing that I forgot to say about the add photo thing and that is that if you had Photoshop elements and um, you see a little beacon for a Photoshop element show up as well, so that you can port a Photoshop Elements catalog. If you've ever had Photoshop Elements installed, even if you've uninstalled it, if the preferences are still there, you'll still see a Photoshop Elements uh, beacon. So I actually really like the look of the new import. I think it's not as frightening. I think you can get helps get photos in quicker without being frightening, and I think they've definitely achieved their goal there. But I just think that they've left some of the pro features out in the cold, and that it would be great to get them back. So we talked before about the uh, preference for turning off that screen. So you go into Lightroom uh, Preferences, or at the, it's in the Edit menu on PC. You can come down here and you go, Show the Add Photo Screen, so you can turn that off. And that does two things, uh, as well as hiding the screen, it also stops that scanning, so that way it can stop some stability issues that are there at the moment. I expect that there will be a 6.2.1 dot release and um, to help with some of those stability issues but it seems to work fine like this I genuinely do like the look at this new import but a lot of people are saying that we should think about not up upgrading I say if you have some of the newer cameras that are supported in 6.2 and you want it don't be afraid to do it I, but I would say turn off the add photo screen for now let me just show you what happens when we do that. We have that turned off now. So if I click import, it now goes straight to the import dialog. Um, so if we click on untitled, it now shows places where you can do it from. So you can browse computer and go through all, you know, cards, all that kind of stuff. So you still have your source uh, panel, but it's just a little bit neater. It's not as frightening as such. Um, one thing that you definitely don't have as well, I'll just show it to you really quickly here, is in destination. You don't have a view of the destination tree. So you can't see your folder layout like you could in the past. Um, I don't think it's as much of an issue as for me as it is for some people. As long as I know that it's going to a particular folder here. And then when it goes by the date, I know the date's going to sit in that. It's nice to see where things are going. But I think because there's so much visual impact in import that hiding some of that for new users is a really, really good idea because it makes it less intimidating. One other really, really small thing that's missing here is with our rename files, we have a view of the template, which is sticky uh, as before, which is great. But 
one thing you did have is you had a little example text that would show you what the file naming was going to look like from that template and that's missing it's not something that's really really big or anything like that but it was convenient to know that just at a visual glance you would know that you had the correct renaming template uh, selected the final thing to do once you're ready to import and bring stuff in uh, like in here I would add apples or something like that is when you, all of this is done and ready you just literally click import five photos and your five photos will import I did make a note on import previews or import presets but just to know that they are still there and you can use them it's just not as obvious I don't mind that it's not as obvious in fact I think that having this advanced tab like this is pretty useful um, so that way when you get used to doing stuff and you can decide to do stuff you're able to go for it um, but again if some of the stuff that's missing was brought back I would jump up and down and say this looks great this is fantastic it's, it's, it's brilliant but it's just that there is some stuff missing and again that stability issue uh, but other than that I'm really really delighted with this so that's been a look at import in 6.2 and the differences between 6.1.1 and 6.2